when you're a fourth grader, there is literally nothing better than field trip day, especially when that day is spent out on the water. The Elizabeth River Project recently received a grant for their Blue Crab Project, which gets Chesapeake fourth graders out to the learning bars, their floating classroom, to learn all about their impact on our waterways. And then you'll see two little antennas popping out. Those are his eyes. And then he'll start crawling around on your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay. So the learning barge allows students to come out, get out of the classroom, and kind of get their hands dirty, do a lot of hands-on activities that they might not do in the classroom. They come out to be junior watermen uh, and scientists for the day. Um, they do everything from touching river critters, they conduct real life science experiments, uh, they learn all about the benefits of wetlands. So I definitely think it's a really unique experience for them, especially for the students in Hampton Roads. Um, a lot of them come from, you know, a few miles away and have never been to the river. Um, so it's really cool to be kind of their first nature experience have it be a good one. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Okay, we're going to teach you all about the male crab and the female crab. Um, right now, this is a female right here. It's got the orange tips on his claws. Um, we got some oyster toads here that we caught. A lot of times if he gets in a crab pot, uh, the crabs won't go in there. So um, he's not our best friend. This over here is our crab bait. That's called Menhaden. And we use them to put in the crab pot every day. And the crabs come in to eat that bait. And then they swim up and they can't get out. And we catch them. All right. And this right here is a female crab. It's a female crab that's got an egg on it. She's what we call a sponge crab. There's like two to three million eggs in that little egg sac right there. Hopefully you all understand the importance of the grasses and everything that, that helps the crab survive. Yeah, the, the fertilizers that go on your yards a lot of time hurt our crabs. Sometimes the fertilizers for your, your yard aren't the best for the river. But when it rains, it washes it right back into the river. If, it's, if he's smaller and he don't fit inside here, we throw him back. And we can catch him when he's good and fat. Jimmy's and Sooks. Y'all tell your mom and daddy y'all learned about Jimmy's and Sooks today. All right. Y'all come and see us, okay? Oh, thank you. So at each station, the students learn a stewardship action uh, that they can start taking today to help protect the future of the blue crab. And of course, the Atlantic blue crab is also very important to this region, to the Chesapeake Bay. Over the last 30 to 40 years, we've seen a decline in their population by 70 percent. Um, they learn all about, you know, rules and regulations of crabbing. So hopefully this can protect the populations in the future and therefore help the economy. I have grandson now and I want this way of life to still be uh, to be there for him and future generations. Uh, I'm a fourth generation waterman, so my great granddad, my granddad, and my dad all were at the water right in the same area. Definitely make more connections when it's time to talk about it in the classroom. It makes them more aware, which is really good because before coming out here, it's like they have a little background knowledge but making them more aware of how to keep the environment clean. They use those things that they learn. They tell me, you know, they go back home, they tell their parents, oh, we have to make sure we clean up after our animal. We have to make sure we don't do these things to keep the environment clean. So you definitely see the impact of it. The Elizabeth River Project does a lot for our community through their mission to restore the health of the Elizabeth River. To learn more about what they do and how you can get involved, visit elizabethriver.org.